Nobody cares about giraffes going because you can't feed a giraffe, you know what I mean? Good morning, I'm Mike Graham. He's Mike Parry. You're listening to Two Mikes on the warm-up. It's all kicked off at Stamford Bridge and Diego Costa's been given the afternoon off. Without him, Chelsea would be in fifth place. We'll get to the bottom of his round with Antonio Conte. He misses the live talk sport game at 5.30 today against the champions Leicester. Is he going to end up on a slow boat to China? 08717 Also coming up on the show, we're talking to the director of Tina and Bobby. We'll get the lowdown on Russian honey traps and we'll have a one-minute moan as well. You're listening to the Two Mikes with me, Mike Graham and Mike Parry on Talk Sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics on the warm up. There's loads going on. We're going to be looking ahead to the Spurs West Brom game, the early kickoff at 12.30, of course. Uh, that was the game that cost them uh, the, the league last uh, season, some might say. Uh, well, that was certainly the beginning of it. But uh, we're also going to be talking to uh, the director of an incredible uh, and very, um, shall we say, passionate uh, drama last night, Tina and Bobby, which was on ITV, uh, which was very, very good, all about Bobby Moore uh, and his, uh, his life and times and some tragedy and all of that. Mr Parry, of course, is here. It's time to say a very good morning to him. And a very good morning to you, Mike. And slightly um, later than uh, expected, actually. What? You. What do you mean? Slightly, slightly later, later than expected. You were supposed to be here like a couple of minutes ago. What are you on about? You weren't talking, in position, were you? I'm in position no, now. You're in position now. We've started yeah. the show. I'm in position. I've yeah. always been in position. Yeah, I know. But, but I make regular distracted. checks on the information we need yeah. to why do the show pouring, properly. Why are you pouring through all these pictures of Lord Snowden? Well, you see, that's very interesting. That old, poor old Lord Snowden has uh, popped his clogs. Well, and uh, well, excuse me, yeah. that's not really the right terminology for somebody who's passed away. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. Well, look, look, look. No, I mean, you're not in a tabloid newsroom now. No, you're absolutely right. Show a bit of compassion. A bit of compassion. A bit of respect. Respect. No, no some respect. At all. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got respect on my radar. But uh, Lord, I worked with Lord Snowden. Now Did you? Uh, you, you might well, say you must have been delighted. Yeah, exactly. You might, you might say. Well, so here's the here's the duo from the Daily Express who are going to interview you, uh, mm. Lord Snowden. Yeah, and this other little short bloke that's with him called Mike Parry. No, from Chester. No, it didn't quite work like that. Lord Snowden was on the periphery of the royal family because, of course, he married Princess Margaret. Well, he was in the royal family. Uh, well, he was a hanger on to the no, royal family. If he, you see what I mean. Well, you might as well say the Duke of Edinburgh is hanging on. Uh, well, they. No, but, I mean, he's at least proved himself over years as a consort to the Queen, you yeah. know what I mean? But, no, no, it's unfair. I should not call him a hanger-on. He married into the royal family. He married Princess Margaret. According to a lot of the um, obituaries I've read this morning, yeah. he was, a, you know, a bit of a lad. Yes, well, certainly he had an eye for the ladies. I think he had a rogerising, uh, safe, safe uh, roving eye. You're not allowed to say that this time. It's no, no. Morning, you know, it's like the watershed is so far away yes. that you can't even see it. Eh? What the watershed? watershed. The watershed, which allows you to use that kind of language. Oh, I see. OK, yeah, sorry. After yeah, 9pm. Yeah, yeah. OK, sorry. So anyway, so anyway, what happens is um, uh, Charles marries Diana. Yeah. And I've told you how I covered that wedding down in London. But the next thing I know, I'm no, up in... No, you haven't, actually, but I'm not interested. No, OK, the next thing I know, I'm up in Rill. Yeah. Because the first public engagement that uh, Charles and Diana ever did yeah. was a tour of North Wales. Oh, so that would have been great, because that's your manner, isn't it? Well, bearing in mind that Prince Charles was the Prince of Wales. Indeed. You see what I mean? And yeah. by the way, in a minute, we're going to talk about uh, Diego Costa, yes. Chelsea, yeah. why I think FIFA why should I? ban players going to yeah. China You're way on, off on that, huge sums way. of money. You're way off on that. But we'll talk about that in a Twitter minute. Twitter has already erupted with that ludicrous statement of yours that no. we should somehow stop the free market. Yeah, You're yeah, supposed no, to be no, free no, no. here. FIFA have got to stop some of the world's best players being sucked into no, China or, or else football's ruined. No, rubbish. Anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. The point is with Lord Snowden. So there I am in the best hotel in Rome. Why don't we just move the Premier League to China? Play it there. Well, I mean, you, you, know, you may not be wrong. Have you may not be wrong. You may not be wrong. Mm. Um, in the sense that the Chinese might have that plan yeah. already uh, yeah, on, a, on a bit of blue paper. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. As a blueprint, so yeah. to speak. So anyway, so... Um, I don't think blueprints are actually on blue paper, by the way. That's why they're called blueprints. No, they're not. They were they were they were drawn with blue crayon. That's why they're called blue blue prints. crayon. Yes. Well, they're not on blue paper though, are they? The blue crayon used to design the hulls of ships <laughs> and all that. That's crayon. why it was called the blueprint. It, it was it not was a crayon. crayon. It was a crayon. No, and, uh, no, I don't think so. Anyway, I'll get back to that in a right. minute. The point of the story is yeah, that so uh, there we are in Rill. Now, in those days, newspapers actually used to look after their top reporters like me and yeah. stay in the best hotels. Now, the best hotel What's in the Rill, best hotel in Rill, exactly, is not exactly <laughs> Park Lane, London, but it's never. 
not the Dorchester, is it? It's not the Dorchester. It'd be like that place you took me to in rugby. Oh, uh, that's right. I didn't yeah, have a bar. Yeah, yeah, the Grosvenor, yeah. Or the Adelphi, where you're not allowed in after midnight. That's, that's unless right. Unless you've got a pass. It, it, it was on that sort of uh, range of hotels. You're yeah. absolutely right. But anyway, um, so what happens is the day's over, you know, done all the uh, words and the pictures all gone. And it's one of those stories where you're not doorstepping anything, so nothing can really happen in the evening. Yes, you know what I mean? Right. Tomorrow she does another engagement, mm. you know? So anyway, we'll get down in well, the bar. Well, then you have to hang around and see what she got up to after hours, as it were. No, because in those days, uh, 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 she and Charles were then going to Carnarvon Castle for right. a, a dinner, which was covered by somebody else in Carnarvon, yeah, you know okay, what I mean? So right. it wasn't a problem. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, we're all in the bar. So you're shirts. straight down on the lash, then? Oh, on the lash, absolutely. Suddenly to be joined by this extremely debonair chap in a blazer and a cravat, you mm. know, and uh, grey slacks, right. you know. Hello, traps. <laughs> and I, I'd never met the guy before, yeah. and I said... Uh, and was, was he Lord Snowden then? Yeah, yes, but he, he, he had his working name, uh, Tony Armstrong Jones. Yes. You know. So, so you call him Tony? Well, I didn't know what to call him, right. so I said, hello, chaps, mind if I join you? Mm. So I said, oh, uh, you're, uh, yes, that's right, Snowden, just call me Tony. Yeah, it was like that. Because a lot of them were, were these one-word things, wasn't it? It was like Downing, well, and he uh, wanted to be called well, Snowden. <laughs> no, this is, that's a better story I'll tell you in a minute, but anyway. No, so, we know that one. Yeah, he, he says, uh, I'm Snowden. I said, oh, OK. So anyway, there's about seven of us, right? So, of course, I immediately stepped forward and said, oh, Tony, you know, patting me on the shoulder, what oh. oh, can I get you? You know, so, uh, do bonnet and you know <laughs> lemonade do or something. Bonnet. Yeah, okay, fine. Get you one of those. So then you know another lad's bought a drink, another lad's bought a drink. Anyway, we'd gone about ten rounds, and it came to my attention that old Tony, yeah. you know, Snowden, hadn't actually bought a round. Right. So you know we were all completely bladderated. Mm. So I said, I tell you what, Tony, and I slapped him a bit harder on the shoulder. You know, I tell you what, mate, it's your round. Mm. He said, What? <laughs> I said, he probably didn't know what you're talking about. He didn't have a clue. I said, it's your round. He said, I, I beg your pardon? I said, look, you've been drinking with us the last three hours. I said, everybody just brought you a drink. He said, the only person who's got a drink down here, Snowden, is you. Now, what, now, put your hand in your pocket. And he said, well, it wouldn't be any point, actually. Hmm. I said, what do you mean? He said, I don't carry money. I said, what? He said, I'm sorry, what, what do you expect me to do? Right. And I said, well, I expect you to buy us all the drinks. He said, I'd love to, but I'm afraid I can't. Did he even have a chequebook with him? Hang on. I said, well, put it on your room then, because you yeah. stay in the same hotel. He yeah. said, oh, I beg your pardon, sir. I have never indulged in credit in my life, and I never will. And really? He put his glass down and walked out. Wow. And that was it. Mm. Yeah, he took ten drinks, and we never got a drink back from him. And who was he working for? Uh, he was working for himself, because right. he was doing a uh, portfolio, oh, see, uh, right. you know, a, a private collection of uh, pictures mm. for uh, the Queen, I yes. think. And um, they're all circles and all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Right. I think the Times actually used one of his pictures as a front page one yeah. the following morning, right. but that was by a commission from them, you yeah, know what I mean? exactly right. Yeah. I was just reading some of the obits, actually, myself this yes. morning, and apparently he once claimed to have driven from Kensington Palace to Windsor Castle yeah. in 12 minutes. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. It's not well, bad, is it? Well, on a motorbike. Uh, I don't know if he was on a motorbike. Yeah, well, that was in the days when... going pretty quick. That was in the days before there was mass congestion exactly, in West London. Exactly, there was hardly any traffic. Yeah. But, uh, no, they all make... It um, 12 minutes to get down Kensington High Street now. You know, there's a load of old wink, 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 you know, nudge, nudge. What? Was, uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Wink, 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 <laughs> wink. <laughs> what is that? Sorry. Wink, 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 <laughs> wink. <laughs> yeah. He, you know, it's all, you know, all coded language. Yeah. Oh, he was one for the ladies and all that kind yes. of stuff. In fact, they had apparently the most dysfunctional marriage in history. Yeah. Um, well, Prince... well, he drove her into the arms of Ronnie Llewellyn. Yes, the that's right. That's right. That's right. Princess Margaret loved it. I mean, Princess Margaret was was just as dysfunctional because yeah. we did the opening of a factory in mm. Burnley. Okay. Yeah. And <laughs> she was rather fond of her gin, wasn't she? Well, this is a great point because uh, before coming to Burnley, well, he's just going to slaughter factory. everybody who's no, passed away. Is no, 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 not at all. Not at all. Shocking. We're going to be talking about out. Diego Costa and China. Yeah, can we get in a to that, please? Yeah, in a sec. Yeah. But uh, Princess Spurs Margaret are playing at twelve thirty. I know that. Yeah, we're going to stop talking about. Snowden we, by there. Yeah, well, I hope so, yeah. yeah. So, so Princess Margaret's opened this factory in Burnley and she's all, she'd just been opening another factory in Blackburn. Oh, yeah. So, Ashley Walton, remember oh, yes, our, our, our Royal correspondent, yeah. he rang... He's not dead, by the way, so he, be careful what no, you say he, about he's not. He rang the place that I was waiting at because there were no mobile phones in those days yeah. and he said, Mike, he said, I'm not sure Princess Margaret will even make it to your place to open it. I said, why? He said, she's been on the gin for the last two hours. I said, <laughs> we saw her helped out of the boardroom at this place and put into the back of her official car. Yeah, exactly. I'm not sure it'll arrive. Oh, well, mm. well let's see. Anyway, about ten minutes later, the official car arrives and all the flunkies go up and they're all standing there like 
car. Yeah. They opened the back door of the car, and Princess Margaret fell out <laughs> <laughs> onto the cobblestones of Burnley. It was so Face funny. down in the gutter. Yeah, absolutely. Terrible. And everybody rushed and said, oh, Her Majesty's not yeah. well. Put her back in the car. Yeah. The car you end up in a tower, well. you keep talking like this, you know. I thought you yeah. had great respect for the royal family and the Queen. Well, I have, You're of about I. her sister. Yes, I know. These are not sort of stories you should be revealing to well, the mass public. Well, listen, it's it's just information. It's just uh, what came on the gilded road along the route. If Is you that see right? what I mean, yeah, on the gilded road <laughs> along the route. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure it's just Red Bull yeah. you've been drinking this morning. How about this from uh, yeah. uh, Big Cheese? Rogerization yeah. reference after seven minutes of a lunchtime show. Good job, Mary Whitehouse ain't around anymore. Absolutely. Hashtag Big Mouth strikes again. <laughs> This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics, and of course, uh, we are here until one o'clock, and then it's time for uh, uh, all the match day live goals as they go in. Mm. Uh, Spurs by then may have scored a couple of goals. They got West Brom uh, at twelve thirty. We'll be talking about that in a moment. You know, is that West Brom game last season? That's well, I mentioned that at the start of the show. Start of the end. That yeah. was the beginning of their sort of um, exactly. fall from grace. That's wasn't right. It? When they, they could two go, points. they could go second if they get three points today, though. They just, could, couldn't uh, they? Briefly yeah. for a day, anyway, yeah. because Liverpool, of course, don't play until Manchester United tomorrow. Sure. Did you see that Manchester United uh, uh, great? Um, um, clip, by the way, of Jason Mourinho answering the phone from Talk Sport. Fantastic. Wasn't that great? Just to explain to our millions of listeners, yeah. what the reporters do these days is they leave the phone in front of Jose because yeah. it records what he's saying. Yes. You know, it's like a, like a dictaphone. It is. Uh, now, uh, the phone started ringing. Yes. And the phone belonged to Dom, who's our esteemed correspondent That's right, in the Dom North. McGuinness, yeah. Dom McGuinness. Yeah. And Who Jose... rather disgracefully threw Abby Patterson, the producer, under the bus Did he? when it turned out that she was the one responsible for making the call. Yeah, um, maybe she was unaware there was a live press conference going on, even yeah. though it was live on TV at the yeah. time. But uh, anyway, Jose answered it and said, yeah, hello. Uh. We've actually got it. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, I do. Let's, have a, let's have a listen Great. to it. What I want is them to be with the team, and they always are. Hello? It's from Talk Sport. <laughs> that shouldn't be working like that. It's for you. <laughs> Wait a second, please. <laughs> it's Abby from Talk Sport. You shouldn't be doing that now, Abs. Not for now. Sorry, it should have been off. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> Great fun, uh, fantastic! Yeah, yeah, he was in good mood, wasn't he? To uh, do well, it. Abby's now the most famous producer at Talk Sport because she's yeah. also now got as her Twitter picture yes. uh, the picture of Jason Mourinho holding, holding the, the phone, phone with her picture on it. Because when yeah. you know Dom's obviously one of these people that he likes to have people's faces pop That's up right. when they ring him. That's right. I've actually got your face that pops up on my phone when you ring. No, him. you haven't. Yeah, have it's quite frightening. Oh, I haven't got yours on mine. For why the, not? The very same reason. You don't know how to do that, do you? That's why you haven't what? done it. You no, don't know how to do no, it. No, you not... don't know how to put my face into your contacts list. I am not into personal aggrandizement. That's really? It. Yeah. Self-aggrandisement, so, you mean? No, any aggrandisement. Well, I'll tell you what, some, mm. people, some people have been keeping an eye on you because Rye says this. Yes. was forky late this morning because he was strolling around Carl Shulton High Street at 9.30. No. You weren't? No, I haven't been to Carl Shulton today. You? Definitely not me. Are you sure? I promise. Right, and I, and I wasn't late. Right. I don't know what you're talking about. I've right. seen it before you. Well, I don't know what you were messing around with then before you actually sat down. I wouldn't be surprised if Porky's claimed those 10 rounds off the estate, uh, says John. Uh, when uh, I think he's talking about Lord Snowden's, um, you know, will. Oh, I see you last, mean. Yeah, last yeah. will and yeah, testament. Yeah. Uh, what a touching tribute to Lord Snowden, mm. who's apparently popped his clogs, mm. says, uh, says uh, Weekend, says Mark. Yes. Uh, and Def says, has Porky got any dirt on Mother Teresa? <laughs> that's, that's I mean, there's, there's no end to that. Anyway, yeah. let's talk about Diego Costa, because Indeed. clearly something's gone horribly wrong at Chelsea. Mm. He, wants to go to Ch- he wants to go to China, very yeah. possibly. Yeah. Or, as I perhaps believe more, uh, he wants to just get more money out of, uh, of Stamford Bridge. I think it's gone beyond that, Mike. I really do. And you think that Georgie Mendes, who is... Uh, uh, Diego Holige. Costa's uh, yeah, Hoge. Hoge. His, his agent is in China uh, negotiating something. I think it's gone one be- way beyond that. And once again, um, uh, Graeme Souness made the salient point yes. last night when I was listening to him. Mm. He said, look, if it was a 10% increase, then he could be trying to sort of green mail Chelsea or yeah. his agent could, you know. Yeah. But this is not. This is going from 7 million a year to 30. Yeah, this it's is a an 400% offer. It's, increase. But this is an offer that's come in for him, right? I mean, yeah, it's not right, just... Yeah. His, his agent hasn't just made this up out of thin air. He's basically... The Chinese His agent presumes he's gone and negotiated Well, it. this is what I was saying earlier yeah. when we were talking to Georgie and, to, and Tony Cascarino. Mm. I mean, I thought just about 10 days ago the yeah. Chinese government said that they were going to put a cap on the silly amounts of money that were well, currently being offered by these Chinese teams. Yeah, but hang on. Inter- you know, governments are incredibly unreliable. Governments say lots of things that they're going to do and they mm. don't do them, OK? Yeah, that's true. And, I, and, I, and I'm not even pointing... In, even in China. Even in China. I'm not pointing my finger at the Chinese. Governments...
governments do. Governments have their own agenda in all sorts of things, you know, in warfare and politics and everything else, yes. and in sport. Yes. Now, we'll be talking about a bit of that as well. Uh, we've got we Sunday Times foreign editor coming on. He's going to tell us all about Donald Trump, uh, the inauguration, which happens next Friday, yeah. and also about Russian honey traps. But he's written a great book about it. Hasn't he has he? indeed, yeah. Chap who's coming on, yeah. yeah. Um, no, what I was going to say is, is that uh, never mind China, you know, uh, uh, saying they're going to introduce their own policy. FIFA now have got to get heavy. Because if China. See, have, this is where I differ with you, because I don't believe, one, yeah. that you can interfere in a, in a, in a, in a market process. Well, you're going to have to. And as somebody has pointed out, and I'm going to find a tw- tweet that they sent in earlier, yeah. you know, this is all down to the amount of money that Sky put into the, into the game, yeah. the amount of money the Premier League are taking out of the game. Mm. You know, they're just now being outbid. And for a long time, as I said to you, mm. the Premier League has been very dominant in taking players from the Bundesliga, yes. from uh, La Liga in Spain. Yeah. I mean, people talk about La Liga not being very competitive. You yeah. might argue that if all the Spanish players who play here were playing in Spain, it would be a much more competitive league. Yeah, but could I just say that uh, Sky, both Sky and the Premier League provide a service which is in massive demand yes, here, I get here, that. here in Europe. Yes, okay? I do get that. There is no demand in Europe for players going to play in China. It's a false economy because it's state money. No, I understand that. It is that. not competitive money. Yeah. Sky well, are I'm successful. Not sure, I'm not sure if it's state Sky money. Sky are successful because people like to subscribe to watch what yeah. they've got. The yes, Premier yes, League is yes, successful. Yes, but what I'm saying to you, and this is where there are similarities, yeah. is the Premier League has sucked in a lot of players from other leagues around the world. I mean, South American football now yeah. has been completely wiped out, really, yeah. by all the Brazilians yes. and, and, and the Argentinians that come and play over here. But the result is of that is we've got a fantastic product. Yeah, so you're not going to have a yeah, fantastic pod- product yeah, but in, if, yeah, in but China. If you, but if you're sitting in China mm. saying, but we've got a fantastic product because yeah. it will get better and better and better, yeah. it's the same argument. Because, I mean, if you're sitting in Brazil right now mm. trying to manage a football team mm. and every single decent player you've got gets sucked away to work in the Premier League, yeah. you're going to say, well, how's this helping me? Do you know what it reminds me of? Seriously. Yeah. And you'll, you know, once again, you won't, uh, you won't grasp the uh, simile I'm going to make here. Is that right? When I was a kid, I used to write, uh, I used to read a, a comic called Victor. Did you? Yeah, Victor. I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. You should have been, you should have been reading Defeatist. No, no, uh, Victor. And one of the plots was this bloke had a spaceship and his spaceship... <laughs> like, no, 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 honestly. This is what you base all your arguments <laughs> no, no, on, no, isn't it? A no, comic from the no, 1950s. No, 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 honest to God, it's very similar. This bloke had a spaceship. Which bloke? Uh, well, he's a mad scientist. A mad, a mad scientist. scientist. He lived in a... In a what was uh, his name? On a, in a hut on a mountain. Yeah. I, I don't know. But anyway, he sent this spaceship out and what it did is, on match days, mm. it used to land on, like, Old Trafford's pitch hey? and then nick Bobby Charlton, you know what I mean? Right. And then fly off. And then next week... What was he trying to get a team together? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did he ever go to Goodison? No, no, it's, it's true. Didn't. It's true. And next week he would land at Spurs <laughs> and he'd nick uh, Jimmy Greaves. Oh, you know. yeah. And then... Did oh, he ever take anyone from Everton? Probably not, right? Well, I can't quite remember. But but the point is, the ridiculous plot was that he brought all the world's best players right. together to this training camp of his yeah. up in It sounds mountain. like a Bond villain. Yeah, that's right. It was like that. And mm. he was going to create the world's greatest team. Right. Well, that, in effect, is what China are doing. Yeah, well, exactly. But you, what I'm saying well, are they is... they going to play against? Yeah, but, well, they'll have to get more... I mean, they can start with one team and then they can move and suddenly... Within, within a couple of years, yeah. they could have six very, very well put together teams. And you can't argue, I'm mm. afraid, yeah. that only Britain and the English Premier League is yeah. allowed to operate like yeah. that. Because unfortunately, if somebody's got a bit more money than mm. you, mm. then you're going to have to pay the piper. Yeah, but the the, the difference and between let them call the, tune. the difference between the Premier League and what China are trying to do is that the Premier League have made it a credible product which employs the, some of, not all, some of the finest footballers in the world. Yes, there is no credibility in what China have at the moment. And to go there for a £30 million a year salary means that you've given up on the basis of playing football at the highest competitive level that you can because there's no competition in China. Yeah, but there will so, be. So it's, so it's bent yeah, all but, the yeah, but rules there, yeah, but the point of is football. That, but there will be. That is the point. In the end... How long will that be? Well, I don't know. Well, but what yes, I'm saying is, is that... Well, I suspect it could be another little bubble like it was the last like, time. Like a decade? But like they, 10 well, years? Mate, possibly. But, I mean, yeah. you might say that the Premier League's bubble will burst eventually. No, Because people have always said that. You can't just keep paying no. more and more money for football matches. No, no. In the end, there will be a limit. There will be a ceiling. And no. surely, if somebody else comes along that's got more money, mm. who can make it work because they don't care whether they make a profit or not, yeah. then then the game will suffer and, and the European game will be eclipsed by China. I agree with, that, with everything you've said yeah. because China is free money. Yeah. But the reason that the Premier League rights go to whoever now broadcasts them, mm. mostly Sky, yeah. is because their business model is better than other people who try yes, to do it. it will. But, uh, but how much longer before the business model Model starts to t- starts to well, fail because the Premier League starts asking too much more money. Well, and if the Premier League can get better money from China, yeah. they'll give it to them. Well, well, look, I'm not. You, there's two different arguments here. Firstly, uh, China taking the best players and mm. making them play in China. Yeah. Secondly, you're saying, will China buy the Premier League rights? Well, they could do, couldn't well, they? Well, they could, but they still broadcast them in this country yes. because there's no audience in yes. China, is there? Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. What I'm saying is, is that mm. because the game has become just now about money, really. I mean, yeah. we're seeing Costa talk yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, we've seen Dimitri Payet. 
supposedly not about money, but mm. wanting to you know go and do mm. something else. We're seeing player power, the like of which has never been the case before. Yeah. Agents like, I mean, if Jorge Mendes is now spending time in China, yeah. I mean, it's a guy who has made an awful lot of things work. Of represents course. some of the best managers. Mm. He represents Jose Mourinho. I mean, how soon before he comes to Mourinho and yeah. says, your next job's in China? Well, that's already been tried with other managers, hasn't it? Other yeah, managers well, have, have gone. Yeah, of course but, it will happen. This guy is at the heart of almost every major European transfer deal, almost every managerial appointment. Yep. If he's doing business in China, mm. then they are onto something. But that's why I think it's got to be stopped. I, I mean, it can't go on. You as, can't stop it. As for the Premier League, my good friend, Mr. Scudamore... Has, Your good friend? Yes, yes. Has When's com- the last time you spoke to him? Uh, Richard, let me see. You know, a couple of months ago. A couple of months like ago? Yeah, yeah, really? yeah. But Did anyway, he call you? And, sorry? Did he call you? It was a function we were at. Was it? Um, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, is that there's been several sort of, quotes crises along the way with the Premier League. You know, wages go through this barrier, they go through that barrier. Uh, what are they going to do about this situation? He overcomes all those. And, 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 and that's why he is manifestly, you know, the best operator in football in the world yeah. when it comes to broadcasting rights and all that kind of thing. Exactly. Now, he can't cope with the China situation if free money is competing against him. The China and crisis. that's why the China crisis, yeah, FIFA have got to get involved. Yeah, I don't think they can. I don't They've think got FIFA, to. They've I, got to say to players, yeah, you go to China, you FIFA, don't play for your national well, team on. anymore. FIFA are actively involved already, right? Mm. Because after that argument we had last week mm. about the World Cup being expanded to 48 teams, how do you think China's going to fit into that model? China is going to be right at the heart of FIFA's model to bring the World Cup to different countries of the world who can put on that many games, right? China yeah. will be one of the countries which is absolutely absolutely key to FIFA. The last thing FIFA want to do is upset the Chinese. So you're a defeatist. You're saying nothing can be done. I'm saying that you follow the money and you can't live by the free market in one country yeah. and not live by the free market all around the world. You're being defeatist. Absolute rubbish. Something has to be done. No. You have to do something because otherwise the game is going to utterly change well, the game in as the we end, know it today. Well, the game in the end will eat itself and it will be its own fault because it has followed the money for such a long time that it's been all about money and suddenly now because somebody's got more money than us, you're upset. Do you, no, do you know what's going to happen? You didn't mind when all that money came flooding into Goodison, did you, with Mr Mashiri? Do you know what's going to happen? Eh? What's going to happen is that... You're going to ignore teams- that one. No, no, it's irrelevant. That's why I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, alluding to it. What's going to happen is teams are going to come out of China and they're going to be like the uh, the Harlem Globetrotters. They're not going to be based on competitive skill. They're going to be based on, oh, look, we've got the best players in the world. Look yeah. at the tricks they can play in midfield. Look at the... Well, what about you, teams that have been accused you know, of buying the Premier League in the past because they just bought loads of great players? I mean, that's the same principle. Well, that was smashed to pieces by Leicester, who made it right and clear that you don't actually base winning the Premier League necessarily on how much money you put into it, you base it on other attributes like a good coach, yes. like a great set of players, yes. like commitment, yes. like taking advantage of yes. the disarray of your opponents. Yes. So it doesn't matter. It, it's not just all about money yeah, winning it is, Premier League titles. I'm afraid it is. Well, Steve, how, how did Leicester win it then? Leicester won it because it was a blip. Because in every competitive situation, in see, every see, statistic... You write that off as a blip. Every, it was a blip. It's never going to happen again. Uh, and oh, no. This year. It was never going to happen the first time. Yeah, well, I was the only one that said it was, actually. Stephen oh, says really? this. After Blackburn, somebody said it would never happen again. Blackburn and it wasn't did. the same. Different Blackburn times, different era. Exactly the same. Talking absolute nonsense. Here's one from uh, Stephen who says, there goes the chance of a live show in Beijing. He's really on one today. And Arsenal Mike says, I also saw Porky and Kosh Alton High Street this morning, about 9.15. So either you're, no, you weren't done. there or you've got a doppelganger. Well, I've got a doppelganger then because I wasn't there. That's bad news for him. This is Talk Sport. Talk Sport, we are the two mics. Loads coming up. Of course, uh, one of the things coming up is the early kickoff between Spurs Indeed. and West Bromwich Albion. We've got Dave Rowe, uh, who's down at White Hart Lane. Indeed, we've got loads and loads of tweets mm-hmm. coming in on the Chinese front. Okay, yes. uh, Pete says, ah, the mad scientist and spacecraft transfer system. What exactly is Porky on this morning? <laughs> uh, Jamie says, great point, MG. We yeah. keep biting the hand mm. that feeds, mm. uh, buying players for the Premier League. Now our hand is getting torn off. We don't like it. No, no, um, no, no. Andy no. points out the Chinese teams are only allowed three foreign players each. That's at the moment. Mm. Uh, Stephen says, I bet if Porky had to cancel a live show in London to get a million quid in China, mm. we wouldn't see him for dust. Uh, well, that would be a commercial decision yes. based on uh, supply and demand, calling, and I can't be in two places at the same yeah. time. So you not quite like the free market system as long as you're benefiting. No, it. Stephen here says, playing China and you can't play for your national team. What utter rubbish, says Stephen. Mm. The Premier League started this. The Premier League didn't start this. You're trying to make out that the Premier League started something which is wicked and evil. They Me. didn't. No, I'm not they saying that. They started something which is said, good no, I don't use because like it brought football to millions and millions of people yeah. around the world. Yeah, but it sucked talent out of every country around the world. It we have players like, playing in the Premier League. Why doesn't Messi play here? Well, he doesn't play here because he doesn't like coming to Why England. Why doesn't Ronaldo play here? Ronaldo did play here, but he wanted to go back to... Why didn't to, Zavi come here? 
Xavi. Yeah. Well, some because they were on very good money playing for the best team in the world. That's what I'm saying. But so every, the Premier League yeah. is not the devil aside, incarnate, no, you know. Excuse me. Aside from from those clubs, Real mm. Madrid and uh, and Barcelona. Barcelona, who basically are are the only real competitive teams yeah. working in terms of the transfer market with the Premier League. Yeah. Every other club in Spain, every other club in Germany, why, why did the every Dutch other lad... every other club in Holland. I mean, they yeah. are all basically being sucked here. They why, are brought why did here. the Dutch lad leave Chelsea and go back to uh, the continental Europe and join? And Bayern Munich because because he didn't like living in name, England. What's his name? Which guy are you talking about? You know the Chelsea winger. He scored against Everton uh, once. And I've never forgiven him because really? he. Uh, well, you haven't forgotten he, his name though, have you? Yeah, I've forgotten his name. Yeah, he's got no hair. You know the bald guy. He's got no hair. Yeah, and he's he, he can be rather difficult about uh, playing when he's minutely injured. You're talking about Iron Robin. Uh, you're Iron Robin. Iron Robin. Are you Iron? Who are you? Who are you? Are you? Who are you? Are you? Are you? This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. We're going to have a one-minute moan coming up in the next hour. We'll yep. also be uh, heading off, of course, uh, to keep an eye on what's going on down at White Hart Lane. West Brom uh, taking on Spurs at the 12.30 kickoff. Lots, lots more for us to talk about as well. Uh, let's talk now to John Mackay, who was the director uh, of a fantastic show that went out last night for the first time on ITV, yeah, episode was, yeah, one, great. Tina and Bobby, mm. all about the uh, the love affair, right. uh, the football life, and some of the tragedy yeah. uh, in Bobby Moore's life. Let's talk to John now uh, and see what he thought uh, of the reaction to it all. John, a very good morning to you. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Mike and Mike. How are you? Yeah, very well we're, indeed, We're John. very well indeed. I mean, this was potentially, um, a, a diff- I presume, a very difficult um, drama to make because of the high esteem in which Bobby Moore is held by, by almost everybody. And, 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 of course, the fact that Tina still very much around. I mean, was it difficult to, 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 to get the mix right? Because it was incredibly well done, I thought. That's very kind of you. I... I th- as a Scot, first of all, I had to get over my natural prejudice and disappointment. <laughs> yes. Mm. 66 well, I mean, and all I'm, I'm, I'm surprised you haven't mentioned 67, John, mm. for heaven's sake. You know, the year that Scotland <laughs> beat the World Cup winners. <laughs> well, we, we've we always got small scores to settle, haven't we? Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. But my main interest in Tina and Bobby was that it was a love story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That you're always looking for the story that tells you a little bit more about a big public story that everyone thinks they know everything about. And in a way, this was like Jackie Kennedy's view of the White House to me. Mm -hmm. It was a a new, different angle on an icon that we all think we know so well. Yeah, absolutely. There's a book out on him about two years ago, written by our friend at the Times. That, again, new information, revelation. What people love, and you're absolutely right here, uh, John, is what goes on behind the scenes. They all saw Bobby Moore as a footballer with his shorts and his shirt on, but when you delve into his private life like that, so fascinating. And what was so... I thought brilliant about uh, your show last night, it showed the vulnerability of a man who was a national hero. Yeah, well, he was known professionally as a bit of an ice man. Mm, exactly. But he was a great strategist, tall guy, fantastic in that left back position. He could see for miles. But back home, he had feet of clay like everyone else. And the the revelation that he actually had testicular cancer yep. before the World Cup in 66. That's He'd right. come through that, yeah. and he was still having chemo just a few weeks before. Yeah. Um, is astonishing. It really makes you see his achievement yeah. in a whole different light. That wasn't revealed, you know, until about 15 years ago. Nobody yeah. knew about that until about 30 years afterwards, honestly. Well, you can understand, in, in football culture, you can understand why he was reluctant to get it in the papers. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. And funnily enough, looking at the, the way that you that you approach the football culture, it's very clear that, in a way, Bobby Moore was the first of, of, of many players now who, who kind of started to talk about doing something for himself, not really being you know attached as like a wage slave to a particular club. There was a great scene with Ron Greenwood where he's saying that you know he wants to move to Spurs and Greenwood's kind of incredulous at him, the idea that he would have the cheek to even suggest it. Yeah, they were, they were like indentured slaves, mm. really. And, you know, this would be very familiar to many of your listeners, but it was a revelation to me as perhaps a slightly younger guy. Mm. So you started out as an apprentice. If you were lucky, you made the team. And then your manager was like your ganger, you know, right. he said everything that went on in your life. 
and you probably got paid a bit less than your wife. Certainly Bobby, when he got married to Tina, mm. was earning less than she was at the Prudential. Yeah, no, no, I, I, absolutely right. Talking about Tina, by the way, I thought that was a fantastic portrayal because I'm a big Coronation Street fan, and when you look at that face and you think... It was completely swept away. That was Tina Moore, you know what I mean? It wasn't a Coronation Street actress. It was fantastic. Well, it's funny. You know, uh, Tina Moore is a very glamorous woman. Yes. She's a, she's an old lady now, but she still cuts a dash. Mm. And when she and Michelle met... Yeah, Michelle Keegan, uh, yeah. ...to do with the filming, I, I think that they had a lot in common, actually, mm. as a very, very beautiful woman yeah. who had... Uh, risen to fame almost by surprise. Mm, exactly yeah. right. Is it, is it surprising to you, um, John, that this hasn't been done before? Because, I mean, it is quite a long time since Bobby Moore passed away and, and since he was a player and since he was sort of, uh, you know, if, if you want to call them the kind mm. of the posh and becks of their time. I mean, is it surprising that nobody's done this before? Well, I think there's there's probably two things that have maybe got in its way before. One is that we only recently have begun seeing the 60s and the 70s as history. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you know, up until last yeah. year, that that was probably just yesterday, wasn't it? Well, in Porky's brain, actually, it's still going on well, now. I mean, he's constantly referring to things that happened in the 60s and 70s, because well, that's, well, that's as far as his memory goes. Well, I mean, you know, the 60s is all about winning the World Cup, and the Beatles, and the Beatles are still talked about, and they're still alive, Paul McCartney and Ringo. So it is, you're absolutely right, it's only just and, becoming history. I think the other thing is that football is notoriously hard to put into drama. Yeah, I agree with that. It's it's hard to shoot because there's a live element in football that is really, really almost impossible to capture in drama. Uh, So my approach was to have almost as little football as possible and to play it like gladiatorial combat because Mm. you can do combat in drama Mm. Uh, much more than you can do that special live yeah. element of sport, which is what yeah. draws us to the live game. Yeah. No, I totally agree and, with that. I totally agree. Whenever somebody's tried to do a series about footballers yeah. and shown football on the pitch, it yeah. never looks real. No. So if you do, you know, footballers' wives, which is off the pitch, mm. it, it's yeah. better. Yes. And probably more yeah. real, to exactly. be honest, as well. Or, and and what's... what's of, of, of sporting movies out of the States as well. Movies like Moneyball, you yep. know, they, they barely show the action on the field. Yes. But you feel like you've watched 10 different baseball matches sure. during the course of the movie. Exactly, Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. what's the reaction been, John, so far? I mean, obviously not necessarily, we know what the critics have said about it, but, but what have you been hearing sort of on social media, that kind of thing? Well, um, it, it seems to be pretty much a success. Oh, it, yes. Uh, we, we trended number one on Twitter, if that's any measure of uh, being part of the national conversation. Yeah, well, I think so. I think two two sets of people who are guaranteed to tweet are uh, Hammer fans and uh, Michelle Keegan fans. That's right. And uh, they both uh, it certainly got them talking. Uh, it's it's funny. Really, this is one for the girls. It's a, it's a love story. Mm. But I think if we tempt a football fan's wife onto the sofa to watch it and then we tempt the football fan himself into the room Mm. just so he can make carping comments about it and then he stays because he gets interested then I think we've done a good job. Yeah, no, I I totally agree. The other issue about Bobby Moore, of course, is that there is still a very active cancer charity, the Bobby Moore Cancer uh, Fund, going on now. So, you know, it's, it's sometimes difficult to extrapolate other elements of his life when that is, you know, part of the national um, psyche. Yeah, he he lived a normal human life. Yep. Part of the story that we tell in the drama is that he was a man, not just an icon. And he had this long and, for many years, very happy marriage to Tina. Yep. And then he started playing away. Mm, yeah. And uh, the connection that we make is that it was when he began to be abandoned by the game mm. and the FA wouldn't let him take any active role as a manager or anything to do with England, yeah. that he he began to lose his confidence and begin to seek comfort elsewhere. Yes, absolutely. I actually worked with him once at a football match when he was the, believe it or not, he was the um, sports editor of a tawdry magazine called, you know, it was a sort of semi-porn-type uh, newspaper. Oh, yeah. and, right. uh, and he was sitting at the back of the room in a black tracksuit and a black peaked cap pulled down over his face. He really didn't want to be there, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think it, it's... If we can contribute 
to the knowledge that Bobby Moore was let down, mm. then I think we'll have done a good thing. Mm. You know, it, a, a retrospective knighthood is long overdue. Mm. Yeah, no, yeah, I John, totally agree well, with that. Perhaps it will uh, you know, have helped him get along towards that uh, that particular end. John, That's thank right, you very yeah. much indeed. John McKay there, director of Tina and Bobby. Uh, got quite a lot of tweets on that front as well. Uh, lots of people are also still tweeting about you and um, Carl mm. Shulton. Yes. Mine says this, he has got a doppelganger in Carl Shulton. I've seen him a few times. It's an uncanny likeness. Really? Yeah, the mystery and the plot thicken. No, it ain't me. Show me a picture, I'm telling you. It ain't me. Yeah, I'm going to put that, put that out to people. If you see Porky anywhere, just take a picture of him and send it into Twitter. This is Talk Sport. So you need so Porky. Recognise that piece of music? Well, I I know it's um, Tubular Bells. Yes. I know it's old, uh, what's his name, Mike uh, Oldfield. Mike Oldfield. But I didn't realise until you pointed it in my direction that that is, in fact, the theme music to uh, The Omen, yeah? Uh, no. What is it? It's The Exorcist. The Exorcist, that's the one. Okay, the Exorcist. Sake. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the reason why is yeah. that P- William Peter Blatty, the author mm. uh, of The Exorcist, yeah. the book, yeah. which I read as a teenager uh, because I was too young to see the film, right? Uh, which was a tremendously successful book, right? Yes. Sold 10 million, 10 million copies. copies yeah. uh, in, the, the, the film grossed $400 million. In those days. In those days. That's a billion today. An awful lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, he's just passed away uh, this week on Thursday yeah. uh, and in a hospital in Bethesda in Maryland. I know it well, Bethesda. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, outside, too, uh, Washington, outside of Washington yeah. DC, yeah, but what an incredible uh, movie! Yeah, what an incredible book. Um, was that the one where the head turned around 360 degrees? That's all right. The, all the green bile came that's out of her exactly mouth. Right. Yeah. That was the. Uh, it was quite a shocking film if it's had its time. It was. The actress was Linda Blair. Linda wasn't it? Blair. That's Linda right. Blair. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I took there a girlfriend were a to see that. Of quite distressing scenes that we can't describe on a family show. I took a girlfriend really? to see that, and she Bobby was crucifix. She was very shocked. In fact, we fled the, the cinema and went to the pub. Hey. Uh, well, that's the story of your life. Watched it in Nottingham. You either go to the pub before the film and yeah. go to the wrong screen, yeah. or you go halfway through the film and go to the pub. That's right. Watched I mean, it's the story of your life. Watched it in Nottingham, and I even know the name of the pub we fled to. We fled to a pub called The Bell, and it had a blue light outside. It's called The Blue Bell. Why yeah. does it have a blue light? Uh, because because sure it wasn't a police station? No, no, no. Well, it, it looked, yeah, it could have been. That's right. It was on Slab Square in Nottingham. Yeah, cut out the middle, man. That's right. Let's go straight to the cells. Absolutely. But, uh, no, what an incredible legacy to leave, eh? A book yeah. like that. Absolutely right. Mm. Now, uh, let me read you a few tweets about the okay. Chinese situation, yes. which is still going on. Yes. Hell says this. Problem with football, it knows the cost of everything, but the value of nothing. Mm. Money and greed will be its undoing. Mm. And Kojak says, who cares if mercenaries go to China? English fans still fill English stadiums and will get more young English players. It'll all be cheaper. Well, well, that might be an offspin of it. I, I totally agree. You know, if it can revive the mm. production line of young English talent, then then there's something to be good said about it. I, I just think it's getting out of control. Yes, it is. But I mean, and that's, unless that's somebody gets to, a grip, but the where point is that's, that's only to be expected. Steve says if revenues exceed cost, Chinese league will survive. If not, it will fold. Yeah. I agree with you, MG. You have mm. to let the market decide. And uh, Mark says, what if the Chinese approach uh, Scudamore to run the Chinese Super League? Well, that's a very good question. Yeah, as well. it's a very good question, and and not beyond the the wit of man that they could do that. I mean. If Diego Costa goes, he is the first truly outstanding international class player to have gone, unless you say Oscar has already done yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, you call Oscar that. I mean, he, yeah, plays, I think he you could. plays in a Brazilian national think, team. Think you could. I um, think you and could. there's also, of course, Carlos Tevez is there now. Yes. Uh, there's a whole yeah, bunch but, of... But, uh, but Tevez has, has... Yeah, but Tevez is still a, I mean, he's still a player that would play in the Premier League if he'd stayed here. I don't think he would be anymore, honestly. I think, I th- I think he realised he had to go back to South America at the right time, and that's what he did to mm. pursue a, you know, his boyhood dream of playing for his Argentinian team again. So yeah. I don't think it was. But this is a very, very significant. I mean, we we don't know yet that he's going, do we? Um, we don't no. know yet whether Diego well, Costa can talk him out of it and say, look, you get £7 million a year here. Eh? The well, difference no. between 7 and 23 a year is, well, is my, nothing. Well, then we go back to my original point, which is that yeah. is this just an elaborate scheme to get himself more money at Stamford Bridge, I which is entirely so. possible. A couple of people are expressing some uh, bizarre... Um, a sort of doubt about my suggestion that Chelsea would be fifth without Diego Costa. Yeah. A couple of people have said, well, how can you say they wouldn't have scored any goals without him? Yeah, but just taking the goals away yeah. doesn't account for all the assists that he's made as well. No. And in actual fact, it's worse than fifth. It's actually sixth. No. Because they would have 38 points no. without Costa's goals. It's a very good point, but I didn't want to make it to sort of, um, you know, um, it's simply a embarrass statistic. you. But the point is, if no, he it's... hadn't been playing, yeah. somebody else would have been playing in his place. That's right. So they would have scored goals. Well, they might have done. But my point is, is yeah. that without Diego Costa, as an 
an entity, yes. as an individual, yes. they would have 38 points. Now, you well, can say that they can put any number of other people in there who would yeah. be exactly the same as Costa, yeah. but you can't guarantee that either. Guarantee I'm much it. more interested in Rob's depiction of you mm. on the cover of Victor magazine. Oh, yes. uh, it says, here's the annual for 2017, oh, yeah. Corky goes berserk in Carl Shulton High Street. <laughs> I like it, <laughs> except I wasn't in Carl Shulton High Street, well, but that's the very you one. You say that, but I'm getting more and more evidence which should point to Carl Shulton being at the centre of your world. QPR Gary says mm. this, yeah. Corky was the local celebrity who reopened a pub near Carl Shulton last year. It's you insulting. can often find him in there at the back with a bottle of Chilean wine hiding behind his stack of newspapers. No, not at all. That was in. Are the, you uh, denying that? No, I opened it. It was called the Bank, and it was in uh, Sutton. And I did as a favour to uh, the landlady, who's a very good friend of mine, oh, yeah. Gail. The landlady. Um, is? Yes, that's what do you right, mean yeah. a very good friend? Well, she's a good friend. What she's sort of good friend? A business colleague, you know, because she's business visit, colleague. She, she's in the uh, Chamber of Commerce. Now, listen, you, you know, her out? you know that uh, I'm not getting to smutty little conversations. It's not like smutty. That. Is that all you ever get down? People to, are interested in your private life. I'm not. You're, getting, getting, you're so secretive no, that no. people want to know about now, it. Now, listen, I, I think... Worse than Howard Hughes. I think you would agree that I am the person here who, when there's a world shortage of a commodity or something, I'm usually the first to you're spot it. You're certainly the one that and, puts uh, it on the radar for everybody else. On the radar. And, and then it turns out that you then cause a shortage because everybody no. goes out and buys whatever no, no, it is no, no, that no. they think you say is going to run out. The latest, of course, what is, is it cream, cream at Christmas. But the latest one yeah. was really going to shock you because the world is literally running out of spinach. What do you mean, literally? It's, it, I mean... Has it running out of spinach? Heavy rain in Spain. The rain in Spain <laughs> falls mainly on the spinach. The spinach, and very it's wiped, good. It's wiped away the winter crop. Well, you're saying that spinach only comes from Spain? Yeah, uh, most of it. Most of the world's spinach comes from Spain. That's rubbish. No, it does. And heavy you rain... Grow spinach in this country. Hey, eh? You can grow spinach in this country. Yeah, not as well as you can in Spain. And and this uh, this torrential rain has literally washed away the winter crop, OK? The winter crop. Stocks are, in my report from my... Um, uh, my an- uh, Sorry, my manual, my, my, my grocer's manual. manual, it says that uh, stocks of spinach are literally like gold dust, OK? Mm. Uh, notice so spinach is an edible flowering plant mm. in the family Amaranthaceae, yep. native to Central and Western Asia. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Western Asia. No, it's uh, grown in Spain. Most of, most of the world's spinach <laughs> is grown in Spain. Well, apparently not. Now, the Grocer magazine, which is another journal that that's I a, that's uh, refer one, to... That's the one that I was shortlisted for. Yeah, that's See, what you were shortlisted so, for. I've been, been so useful if I ever got the job there. Uh, it says that the heaviest rainfall ever in 30 years in the southeastern Murcia region of Spain... That's Murcia. Murcia region. Murcia. 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 No, Murcia. Murcia. Say Murcia. It means that... You know, Marta outside is waiting for us to do something for her for talk radio, right? She's from Spain. She will be appalled to hear your pronunciation of Murcia. Oh, well, she can give me a lesson or two. It's not, now, it's not West Murcia. No. Know. The other problem is the shortages have been made worse mm. by unseasonably cold weather in Greece see the time, and though. Italy, which also produces what is known as the richest iron veg. Really? It's rich in iron. Are you a fan of spinach? I love spinach. Do you? The only problem How do I've you got... eat it? I usually buy four bags, right? Four, four bags. big bags, yeah. Because what you mean the ones you get in the salad section? Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. it's because... nice spinach salad. Actually, you eat it raw. Yeah, but by the time you've boiled your spinach down, it's about the... <laughs> no. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, you get a huge bag of spinach. And by the time well, I boiled you it boil down, it? you can you can squash it all in one hand. Yeah, in fact, you... I've done that. You well, can... Do you it's... think you might be boiling it a bit too long? No, 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 <laughs> no, no. And uh, I you, use... know you can drink the spinach water after you've boiled it. Well, I, uh, yeah, that's a good point. But what I normally do is. I eat it with gammon. I think it's fantastic. What, so you boil the spinach down to yes. it so you can get it all into one handful? Well, no. And then you have some gammon with it? Yeah, I do, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's Mind boggles. It's great. It's like eating, oh, compact soup, if you see what I mean. You know what I mean? Compact soup. Yeah, it's brilliant. But anyway... Why do you boil it so long so that it, all, the, all the iron and all the all no, the goodness is no, no. boiled out of it? No, it doesn't. Rainfall... Why do you try to do something else with it? Rainfall has left some fields reduced to just 30% capacity... They've had 150 to 250 litres of water per square metre. They probably shrunk that, it all down to the size of a ball. In, in that part of Spain. And I'm afraid that if you're lucky enough to get a bit of spinach, you're going to have to pay for it. How, you much, know, how much do you pay for your spinach? Supply and demand. I, I think a bag of spinach is about... You have no idea, do 65p. You? You're like an MP. It, it was 65p. It, mm. look, I think it's going to go up in price, mate. But no. anyway... Bad news for Popeye. Uh, bad news for Popeye, certainly. Um, I, if I were you, I would try making a spinach salad, right? Yeah, mine too. Spinach with ba- a little bit of bacon... A yeah, bird. well, cut up a gammon, boiled egg. Gammon, not are. gammon. No, why bacon. would I cut up a boiled egg? I've never eaten an egg. So because, would... because a spinach salad with a little bit of bacon and egg and a little bit of vinaigrette sauce. Yeah, beautiful. but you know I can't eat eggs. So that's a silly well, thing. You to can say. eat them. No, I can't. You I've can. never eaten one. No, you have. I have not. You eat cakes. I've got eggs in them. You're I not have... allergic to eggs. You just are. 
being cussed about. No, I have never been able to put an egg in my mouth and swallow it. There's some sort of reaction well, in my... Well, that's why you should cut it up no. first. No, 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 I can't Thanks. eat an egg sandwich or anything. Honestly, I've tried. Yeah. It, have it's you? No good. All no right. Good. Crossy says this, I've just Googled what happened in the 60s and all it came up with is a picture of the World Cup and the Beatles. <laughs> huh? This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. We've got a one-minute moan coming up in a little while. Now, uh, the Sunday paper is one of your favourite pastimes. You still like to pour over them every single Sunday morning, don't you, and uh, get them all in. Well, just... you, you say that as though there's something wrong with that. That's, part, that, no. that's part of I'm my application no, to not, my no, job. I don't know why you're so paranoid. What I'm saying is, is it's something an awful lot of people you, you, like to You do. spend most Sunday mornings out walking your dog to clear your head from your, your yeah. night of bladderation well, the night know, before. As you know, I spend time with my family on a Sunday, the yeah. dog, the kids and all yeah. of that. But right now, we're going to spend some time with Peter Conradi, who is Excellent. the foreign editor of the Sunday Times, a magnificent newspaper, uh, which we all love on a Sunday. Peter, a very good afternoon to you. Welcome to the show. Good afternoon. I'm glad to hear that at least one of you reads the papers on a Sunday. <laughs> well, exactly, Peter. Well, I have to me. confess, Peter, that I actually have the Sunday Times and the Times uh, iPad app. Mm. Um, as much oh, as I... that's what we like. Multi-platform. As, yes, exactly. Multi- so between us, you know, we've got you covered. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but, but, I mean, this has been a fantastic sort of uh, period to be a foreign editor, hasn't it? Because you've got the Donald Trump inauguration coming up. You had his first press conference the other day, Barack Obama's uh, final sort of mm. uh, uh, farewell and all that. Um, and it couldn't be a more exciting story, really, could it? It's absolutely great. I mean, we, you know, we at the paper say Donald Trump is the gift that keeps on giving. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it, it is extraordinary. You know, his press conference this week was absolutely tremendous. Mm-hmm. I mean, any, you know, to define the word presidential, um, he's anything but you know, <laughs> extraordinary. Yeah. So we're looking forward to another four years of that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this, we've had this wonderful spy well, yeah, well, that's, that's, been mean, un, that's been unfolding this week. Now, this um, is something, of course, which you can speak on with great authority, Peter, because one of the reasons it's such a pleasure to talk to you is you've researched this to the extent that you've written a book about it, haven't you? I have, yeah. No, my, my, my connection with Russia goes back a long way because I was a, a correspondent in Moscow uh, in the early 90s at the same time as Chris Steele uh, was under undercover at the British Embassy. Yep. Uh, I'd like to say that I was best mates with him and we used to <laughs> hang out in uh, Red Square together. Um, sadly, I didn't. No. <laughs> I didn't, no. I didn't. Did you actually know of his existence, though? No, right. no, I, I didn't. I mean, he, he, he was there, you know, he would have, been, he would have featured on the list of... Uh, the list of um, Diplomats in the embassy, you know, yeah. he was, I think, the second second secretary or, or something sort of fairly kind of anodyne sounding. Mm. He was obviously there keeping an eye on things. Um, mm. So, no, I've, I, as you mentioned, you've kindly mentioned my book. No, I've just written a book which is coming out next month, which is looking up called uh, Who Lost Russia, mm. uh, which is basically wondering why 25 years on after the end of the Soviet Union, you know, why they're our enemies again. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, uh, some of your book refers to the honey trap situation. And whenever I go to Russia, Peter, I am s- astonished astonished at the beauty of the young ladies who sit around in the foyers of all the best hotels, smoking cigarettes and looking at you with alluring eyes. I mean, that is the start of the honey trap problem, isn't it? It, it is. I mean, I must say my honey trap problem, I think, was that I, I, I never got lured into one. I was, you know, <laughs> exactly. travelled, travelled all over the country. I was sort of staying in lots of hotels and... They always, people always say, you know, wait for that knock in the middle of the, the, middle of the night, That's the knock right. on the door. Yeah. Uh, it never came, right. you know. I mean, it all Journalism just isn't what it used to be, I'm afraid, I, is it? Clearly not. Whereas, <laughs> I mean, this, you know, the centre Ooh. of these allegations, I don't know how much uh, your listeners want us to go into the lurid details. Probably not too do, lurid at this no, time of the day. No, no, no. But they do, they do centre on um, certain activities in the Ritz-Carlton, a very swanky hotel. Um, I think it's owned by Mr Abramovich, isn't it? Is it? I think, I think the Ritz-Carlton's partly owned by Mr Abramovich, you know, the Chelsea boss. Oh, uh, is it? Yeah, I, I think d- so, I, yeah. I, I, I didn't realise that. I mean, it's a hugely, you know, hugely yeah. expensive, hugely swanky place. It was exactly. like sort of 14,000 £14, a night for the presidential suite with a nice view of St Basil's and Red Square. That's right. And, um, you know, mm. the centrepiece of this dossier that's been swirling around to be the centre of attention this week is that uh, Donald was there with some of those aforementioned ladies of the night yeah. uh, who got up to all sorts of curious things mm. uh, which may turn some people on um, Apparently not him though, denied. according to what he said at his press conference on the grounds well, that he is of course a germaphobe. I mean have you I'm, got, without giving away uh, the store as it were, have you got something revelatory on the Trump story coming up tomorrow? Well I mean we have got, you know, we've got people uh, at this end um, and in America and in Russia who have been basically reconstructed Constructing the whole story of of this spy, mm. um, you know, is, we're not quite sure. Is he the spy that lost the plot? Is he the spy that came in from the cold, went out into the cold? Have you, you know, have you found so him by the way? Unused, hmm? Have you found him? No, no. He, he is. You know, we have been outside his uh, his house in Surrey, as yeah. have most of uh, the rest of Fleet Street. Um, 
he went off. He disappeared on, I think, Wednesday morning, yeah. possibly, before his name broke, yeah. um, leaving his cats with the neighbour, yeah. um, saying, I may be some time. <laughs> um, we don't know where he's gone. You know, he's going to have to come back eventually. You know, he's the yeah. director of a, a big... Um, you know, intelligence C- company kind of company, yeah. company in Mayfair is swanky yeah. kind of place with That's a right. set up with a former MI6 guy That's um, right. in Belgravia. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these people in this story must hate the fact that they're now under any kind of scrutiny at all because they prefer to work in the shadows, don't they? Exactly. No, I mean, the, this, this, this was a sort of a classic kind of report he did. You know, this was for a, mm. uh, you know, someone funded this report. And the idea is you do it discreetly. You know, he was a, you know, you, 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 uh, we've spoken to people who've met him and, you know, he, they sort of say, you know, he looks like any kind of uh, early 50-something London businessman, yeah. you know. I mean, these people are trained not to stand out. You That's know. right. You know, you just look like, you know, you see him on the train every morning from, from Surrey, you just think he was another commuter. You, you would. Just very quickly, Peter, did you ever come across my very good friend Peter Hitchens and my very good friend Will Stewart, who... Uh... Ah, yes. No, Will, Will Stewart has um, is, is been part of the team working on this, uh, even though he's doing so from holiday in Thailand. Um, <laughs> good old Will. Yeah. Good old Will. Do give him our regards, whatever you do. I, yeah. I will indeed. And uh, Peter Hitchens, no, he and I were, he were, there, I were there at the... At the same time. Exactly. Uh, inter- interesting character. Yeah. Very, very interesting Well, Mr. Indeed. Parry was, uh, was partly responsible for setting him up with an office there, but we'll talk mm. about that another time. <laughs> but, uh, Peter, what else uh, uh, delights have you got for us in the Sunday Times tomorrow that uh, we can tell people about? Well, I think we've got something I think that will appeal very much to to your listeners, which Ooh. is uh, one of our sports guys has been to Brazil, to uh, Chapeco, which is, if you remember, the team who were wiped out. Mm. Um, yes, we do, yes. In, in, the, yeah. in, the awful, in that awful accident. Yeah. Uh, they've been down there. Um, I haven't read the piece yet, but apparently he's got some great, great stuff on, you know, the new team. Yes, that's right. The new team. And this is, you know, shadows of, of Manchester United. Exactly. I was going to say tragedy. sort of post-Munich um, problem. Yeah, yeah, sure. Precisely. Yeah, so that, that I think, is going to be a great mm. read. Yeah. We've got um, our whole of our travel section is mm. the best 100 holidays of 2017. Mm. And uh, it's not just expensive ones, because I know that's often a problem with, with newspapers, you know, but this has got lots of... Mm. Stuff for different budgets for people like culture, the people like wow. the outdoors, people like uh, yes. I don't know so, anything else. So, uh, so, so, and what so about this remarkable good. story from the US as well that's broken sort of overnight from Jacksonville about this teenage girl um, who's been tracked down after being uh, been kidnapped from a hospital eighteen years ago. Yes, no, that 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 is extraordinary, and I mean that's going to move in the in the course of in the course of today because um, you know anyone who read the papers this morning just saw the fact that she had been found, mm. whereas we've had this sort of extraordinary um, sort of brief encounter with her and her adoptive mother in the courtroom where she's sort of saying, I love you, mum. And, you know, it seems that she's taking her, you know, she's taking the side of the woman who snatched her from a hospital 18 years ago. Yeah, it's extraordinary, but, isn't it? Yeah, but she unfortunately looks like she's going to be heading for jail. Sweden, Stockholm. Yeah, uh, so, sorry, yeah, yeah, isn't it? What's it called? Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome. Exactly That's what right. I was looking yes. for, yeah. Well, are Peter, you're going to have a very busy uh, few hours, I, des- I dare say. So thank you very much for spending some time. Are you going out time. for the inauguration, Pete? Uh, I've, I've been waiting for my invitation and it doesn't appear to have arrived. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not like it used to be really when isn't. you worked for the Sunday Times. No, exactly right. Absolutely. Listen, Peter, thank you so much for yeah. taking the time to talk Thanks, to us. Pete. We'll talk to you very soon. Peter Conradi there, the uh, Sunday Times foreign editor, uh, with an interesting take on what's been going on with this spy scandal. Uh, and it's all in the Sunday Times tomorrow. This is TalkSport. That is, of course, the music for uh, the One Minute Moan. Now, as usual, I've been uh, kicking you all over town yes. uh, as far as the uh, the result of who's best with the One Minute Moan. Yeah. So here's another chance for you to try and get one over on me. Yeah. By having a, well, that uh, won't be difficult. A, well, it will be difficult because no. I don't think you've won a One Minute Moan ever well, in the whole time that we've been doing it. That's and because so, you've got all the bent officials no, in your back pocket. only you I believe, you believe that corruption exists in this office because yeah, I, I don't. Do. Be- I know that it doesn't. I know that that's the way you've operated all yeah. your life. Stop justifying yourself and let's get on with it. All right, well, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's start the clock. Okay. Right, my one it moan today is on Ed Balls. Sorry, stop please. Sorry. Stop, stop that clock. Sorry. What is your problem now? Well, you didn't say one minute. You said oh, oh, oh. you got to say one minute moan. You don't have to say that. What? You don't have to say it. It's a waste of time. We know it's the one minute moan. You interfere too much. You just shut your gobbo. Okay. Right. All right, right get on with it. Again. Right, let's start again. Have another go. Take two. 
My woman in my own is about Ed Balls, OK? I cannot stand this man. Don't you realise he was the one who tried to almost break this country down financially, economically? We were nearly bankrupt. When the new government well, got in... done this one. When the new government got in the... Co- I'm doing it again. When the new government got in the coalition government, they went to the Treasury. He was in charge of the Treasury. There was a note there which said, there is no money left, OK? He didn't write that, though, did he? There is no money left. He didn't write it, but it was written there. Now, then, what really infuriates me is I've read this piece this morning. Ed is now... Going Going on the road with come, Strictly Come Dancing, OK? Ed hits the road as he heads out on the Strictly Live tour with Katia. Ed Balls on how the show's turned him from zero to hero. You are not a hero, Ed Balls. And this quote makes me want to vomit into my own Family teacup. Uh, it says, uh. now everyone I... He says, he says, politics is divisive. People always say, I hate you. It's like football. You can't sport Sorry, Norwich. I have, I have to interrupt you. I now, have to interrupt you. What? There's been a goal at White Hart Lake. Now... Well, I have to interrupt. Now, was there any time left on Porky's one-minute moan? Or yeah, was he... ten seconds left, OK? Ten... All right, go for the last ten seconds. Right, here Clock, we... Clock, please. Here Hang we on. go. Hang on. And, the, and the quote... On. I... Hang, on. Hang on. Are you ready with the clock? The clock was already ticking, you buffoon. Hang on, Let's just let him start again from ten. Go on. There you go. Right, and the quote that really got me, and now, which makes me want to throw him to the waste bin in this studio... That's it. Now everyone <laughs> I meet smiles or pats me on the back. Now yeah, everyone I meet He's smiles finished. or pats me on the back. Well, I mean... Don't don't makes pat him change, on the back. Makes a change for being stabbed in the back, I suppose, yeah, which is what country. happened when he was in the cabinet, wasn't it? Hey, You've I, I, already I, done Ed Balls. Unspeakable. I think I don't I'm even, doing Ed Balls again. I don't even think I need to do one to, to, to win this week. No, because, you certainly do. You know, you will get repetition. This is uh, a new development. Also, it's a new development. He now also, says everybody likes me. I'm going on the road. I'm popular. You're not popular with me. You're finished now. OK. Would you like to... Uh, now, I know that you, you think it's all about you, this show, but no, I, no. I now have to no. do one as well. Well, you have to do one as well. Right, yeah. I, will, I will just instruct the uh, gallery to get going when we are ready. Are you ready? Yes. Gallery, go. My one-minute moan is going to be all about the weather, right? Because we've been told <sighs> for days and days and days and days that we've got to watch out. Uh, there's going to be <sighs> blizzard conditions. I looked out at my window in my flat in London at the blizzard conditions, <sighs> and there was literally not more <sighs> than about five snowflakes sitting on one car window. Wow. And they closed off all sorts of uh, uh, streets. They put out all sorts of grit. And I'll tell you why the main reason <sighs> is that I'm actually going to be complaining about this, because this will be happening all over the country, and people will be able to tell you <sighs> that they agree with me. A friend of mine was due to make a run in a, an ultra marathon this very day yeah. down in Dover, right? Oh. Now, £70 is paid by all the people that go in for these Simply runs, OK? Could, yeah. And this, believe it or not, even though there's no snow, mm. even though there's no ice, mm. even though there is nothing other than a little bit of cold weather, yeah. despite the fact that all the bottles of water have been put out for the marathon right. runners, despite the fact that the track has all been laid, no. despite the fact that all the uh, roads oh, have been sorry, shut down, the health and safety people have mm. come out and said yeah. that you have to cancel the event because it's too dangerous, people might slip and fall over. Yeah. What an absolute disgrace. Oh, right. And see how perfect timing. Yeah, and the weather. Wow, that was Ross a really has, uh, novel subject. Ross, Ross has just told me that uh, that I've won again. No, he hasn't. He has. No, he hasn't. You can't possibly have won. He's just you can't told possibly me. won. Yeah, you I did am. the weather. I've the done. weather's the most talked about subject in the world yeah. in this country. Well, it's not more talked about than Ed Balls because you've done him twice. Not, I don't care. It's a new development. He's now claiming he's no, popular. Incorrect. Now everyone I meet. Yeah, how about this. Now everyone yeah, I meet smiles or pats me on the back. Well, he's about as deluded as you are. I tell you what, if I met you, Ed, you wouldn't get a smile or a pat on the back from me. What would you give him a reminder of your incompetence as a financial politician <laughs> or a politician who worked in the treasury well that makes a change i thought you were going to threaten some kind of violent attack there for a I moment don't I don't have to rein you in you don't no. believe in violence no. Thank you for that. another win for me what's adhd ADHD? Yeah. Do you mean ADHD? Yeah. Attention Deficit Disorder? It's uh, Gareth here, so has got the show on in bed, and my wife uh, has only listened to it for the first time and already diagnosed Porky with ADHD within the first hour of the show. It means you have a very short attention span. It is is a a problem that many people suffer from. Yeah. I can can, can recommend some drugs for you if you like. No, 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 no. Uh, They give people Ritalin for that. These people are all your sort of dwindling band of supporters. Dwindling. Let's have a look at some of the tweets that have come in about the uh, one-minute moan. 
Pete mm. says this. Porky seems to be struggling with the concept of a one-minute moan. Mm. Uh, it's one minute and it's a moan. Yeah. Hashtag simple. Yeah. Uh, Maxwell says, just tuned in, heard Porky ranting incoherently mm. about Ed Balls mm. again. Mm. I thought I'd gone back in time. No, Hashtag no, no. lunatic. No, no. And Fordy says, MG, spot on, Ray, the weather forecast. I'm still waiting for the heavy snow predicted two days ago in Swansea. It's just cold and damp. Yeah, well, uh, listen, the only reason I've keep my eye on the situation is any politician who thinks he can make up for his errors as a politician, you know, and the trouble he's caused the country by going and doing a bit of dancing and smiling, and then come out with this quote, now everyone I meet smiles or pats me on I the back. you got against Ed Balls. I mean, forgive and forget is a very good motto by which to live your life. Yeah, but not if you're trying to wreck the country at the same time with, uh, with uh, wrong policies. Uh, here's one from Paddy, uh, who's in favour of you. He says, blimey, Mike Perry was on fire there. The man is a leg end, as in legend. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Paul says, Porky sounds like he's going to explode. The working one third of his heart could be in danger of failing by the sounds of mm. it. We haven't talked about pay it much on this show, you know. No, we haven't. And um, Well, we did quite a lot of him uh, the other night, didn't we? We did, we did an awful lot of him the other night, but obviously the development's moved on now because yeah. the allegations are this morning. He would have said that uh, I've got an injury. He, he said, I'll, don't worry, I'll invent a fake injury yeah. if you don't allow me to... It's very curious, isn't to, it? To we're, still, I mean, we're still not... I mean, you're not uh, in favour of the story or you don't really believe the story that he's homesick and he wants to no, go back to France. don't believe it for a moment. Right. And, and in fact, actually, what... what uh, he wants to go to it. China and he hasn't said. Well, maybe he does. I mean, that, he could well be that uh, is the case. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a very legitimate um, concern. Mm. But what I was going to say is, the lad who came, the, the chap who came on with his little son, Zach, yeah. the West Ham fans, going yes. first today, I mean, he actually, you know, put it into a nutshell. Yeah. He said, nobody had heard of pay it until we brought well, him into the Premier also, League. Also, did you notice when you said to little Zach, you know, who's your favourite player? Yes. And he said a name and he said now. Because yeah. I bet you, you know, a week ago, it, might have been it, was, it was pie. And yeah. that's the bit that, that yeah. some of these footballers forget. And, you know, yes. and they, they get paid very well. They've got families of their own. Yeah. But there are an awful lot of little kids like Zach, seven years old, yeah. who worship them. Yeah. And suddenly, this is how they treat them. They turn around and they say, you know what? Mm. I'm not playing for your team anymore. You'll have oh, a situation dreadful. You'll have a situation at West Ham today, Mike, where people who last week were wearing a West Ham shirt won't be this week because it'll have pay its name on that's the back. Right. And nobody's well, going to walk... Wouldn't, you wouldn't wear one at the London uh, Stadium, That's what I'm you? saying. You wouldn't go down to the London Stadium today with that name on the back because, to all intents and purposes, that man has betrayed the club yeah. that actually gave him his biggest break ever in football. He was an average footballer with an average profile until West Ham took him on, so Slavin Bilic is responsible for that. And... and and, and they raised his profile to such an extent that he got into the French national team. He, he got into the French national team. He became a favoured, um, you know, Premier League player. The the bids were starting to be assembled. You know, for the ton, forty or fifty million pounds. He decided, uh, you know, the the grass was greener at West Ham, but now that the grass is turning slightly at West Ham, yeah. he wants away. The AstroTurf is greener on the other side, you uh, might uh, say, uh, if you were exactly. familiar with the layout of the pitch. Exactly, and I wouldn't blame any West Ham fan for feeling utterly rejected and let down by the guy's behaviour. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Now, yeah. here's one from Dom. MG, tell Porky Liverpool's under-18s have just beaten Everton's under-18s 2-1. The future is looking bright, fat man, for Everton. <laughs> I've just seen a very worrying picture somebody <laughs> sent me, right? Yeah. They've understood that I'm going up to Goodison tomorrow. Yes. And then I think just to shake me up and, uh, and make me worry, they've sent me a picture of a bus mm. and it's got the dreaded title on the front of the bus, mm. Rail Replacement. Oh, God. You don't want that, do well, you? Well, I don't want my train well, stopping producer short. Ross, producer Ross had to come in from uh, f- parts far away yeah. this morning. Yeah. Turns up at the station to mm. find the yeah, yeah. replacement Rail bus. Rail replacement. Rail replacement, yeah. Nah, I can't stand it. Shocking. Now, Simon uh, remembers yeah. some of the things that you've said in the past. It mm. says, Porky's resentment towards Millwall has been pretty evident lately. Mm. Bournemouth reserves 42 million quid mm. versus Millwall team 300,000 pounds. Mm. He was saying that Bournemouth reserves were, right. were the ones that lost, but yeah. that was what they were worth, 42 million quid. You yes. know, don't let anybody ever you know fool you into believing that some of these so-called mm. smaller clubs in the Premier League haven't got any money. Oh, no. They've got a team worth 42 million quid. Everybody's got money now. By the way... Well, not um, everybody. By the way, I'm keeping one half of one eye on uh, the Spurs game, and yeah. they have just very, very oh, nearly... That was close, wasn't it? Very, very nearly uh, mm. taken, uh, uh, extended their lead to yeah. two. I think Harry Kane's getting better and better, by I the way. I think he was tremendous. That first goal was, yeah. um, um, just to explain to our millions of listeners, mm. he, he he received the ball with his back to goal, yes. so he spun round, yeah. and he had one-tenth of a second to see whether there was a gap he could uh, he could uh, use to, yeah. to, to, to uh, aim at, and he did. It Uh-oh. was brilliant. And there's another goal. It is another, another goal. goal. Not... Hey, bro, thanks very much. Hey, mate. Indeed. It was an OG. It was an OG. <laughs> well, you never know, by the end of the game, there might be a couple of PKs <laughs> for uh, West Brom to get back into the road game. <laughs> I don't think West Brom got 
Bats. Burrs on their radar. They haven't got them on their radar. Got Harry Kane now, on the radar. Astonishing, I found someone that agrees with you, right? John has tweeted, yeah. Porky is my hero. Mm. I thought I was the only one that felt like this about Ed Balls. Oh, I cannot stomach the bloke. Good. good Unfortunately, you. you don't get a vote. Uh, yeah. Brian says this, Porky moans all day, mm. and when it comes to the one-minute moan, mm. he doesn't get the concept. <laughs> yeah, no, I do. And here's another one in support of you. These yeah. have all come in too late, I'm Excellent. afraid. Cool. Andrew says this, Porky is completely in tune with the great British intelligent public. Thank Ed you. Ed Balls is a complete deluded numpty. Yeah, thank you very much much indeed and that wasn't my words that's the words of one of our brilliant listeners yes. and we have millions of them yes. so mr balls if you're listening we've got your measure now here's a great picture here of paul paul has sent this picture out uh, which was taken uh, mm. somewhere in liverpool right yeah um and it's of uh, him embracing me mm. and uh, he says uh, very very shortly thereafter seconds after uh, old mg did a pitch perfect rendition of don't look back in anger oh come now, on people you put have been this asking out for last that. night no you people put... have been demanding that i keep tweeting it out Demand. and i'm mind surprised that you haven't retweeted it uh, you well, retweet everything else why should i retweet it because you are duty bound as a shareholder of 50 percent of the two mics mm. That anything that we do on Twitter, yeah. we should be both involved Your in. Your puretile attempt to try and defeat me in singing, yeah. pathetic. It's not a question of pathetic. defeating you. Nothing, it's not all a competition, you know. Yeah. yeah. Who got to all... number 62 in the charts with Paint It Black? Well, same as your age. Me. Really? Me. Me. And Where? nothing to do with my age. What, 1962? No. No, 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 no. More recently than that. Yeah, all right. No, no, I'm not going into that. I'm yeah, well known for it. I know. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting a bit bored of beating you everything, actually. I might just have to throw a few of these games coming up. Uh, this has been the warm-up. We'll be bored back, by the course, gerrymandering. Uh, next week. Don't forget to keep tuned to Two Mics TV. Uh, keep following us on Twitter, at the Two Mics. Uh, we'll be putting out loads of stuff over the weekend. This is TalkSport. On DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM, the warm-up with the Two Mics on TalkSport. So, you know, 